Hi, I'm Joe Daniel from JoeDanielFootball.com and the Football Coaching Podcast. And here today, I want to show you the midline option that's going to be out of a pistol spread look. Now, this is actually something that I've used in our own pistol power offense system uh, and really easy to adapt. It's not something we stuck with, uh, but we did run it, have some success with it. Just didn't really fit our, our personnel. Um, but it was really easy to put in. The basics of the midline option are we're going to read the first guy head up to outside of the guard. I think we could read it two eye as well. We never got really good at it, but the first guy on the guard at the very least. Some people will read a shade. I would rather check to the other side. So in other words, if I've got um, if I've got a uh, midline to the left called here and I see this one technique, this weak shade uh, over here, I'd rather check it to the other side. Most of the time we're going to have an idea of where that's going to be. Uh, and so that's the rules. The first guy head up to outside and we're going to look at this against an even front 4-2-5 defense here. Um, it doesn't matter, 4 2 5 4, four doesn't matter, the coverage really, we're really working in this front six uh, is the main concern. The first thing is, we're not going to block our read here. Um, so he will not be blocked, we're going to leave him unblocked, and that's, that's probably the biggest key. And we tell our guard, take the easiest, re easiest route to the backer. Um, we don't want to take, we'd rather take the inside release if we can, if we've got a head up, we want to take the inside release if we can. Uh, but we're not going to force the inside release on a two eye. But most of the time we're running this, we should be getting an inside release and climbing to the linebacker here. We're going to get a base block on this defensive end. Just keep him out. He's not going to be involved in the play. Backside, we want to be cutting off. Um, we're just going to kind of step. He'll step like a gap uh, with the center, but he's really going to be punching. Right here, he's the only reason he's stepping to the play side, and again, we're running midline to the right here, uh, to that three technique. The only reason that he's stepping to that play side is because he does not want to allow this nose to cross his face. So he's going to step. We're going to have a harder step coming across and trying to cut off the nose there. I'm not going to worry about this backside end. Now, you do need to be alert that if that backside end is a player, I mean, he's a real dude who can run this thing down from the pistol, you will want to block him, okay? Most of your defensive ends back there, they're not going to be a problem for you. And if they are, if they're really crashing hard, you can do some things like a naked boot off of it. Um, our play action off the midline is going to boot back around that guy uh, to try to slow him down. But that's some different things that we can do. On the edges, um, just we're going to stalk. And I'm going to bubble both guys just for consistency. You don't have to. And I tell our quarterbacks, you know, when we were on a veer, um, or even if we ran a pistol, something like that, a pistol... Um, power, something like that, we, we could still read and then decide to throw. The only time in midline that we're going to throw these is if they are pre-snap read uncovered. So if I look out there and this strong safety has really gotten down into the box and this guy is just all alone, it's two on one, then he can pull up and throw it. But the fact is we're not going to read off the midline. We do read off the veer and throw it, but off the midline, we're not going to read the midline and then try to throw afterwards because there's a lot more quarterback mechanics in this thing uh, than there are in some of the other runs. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to hold that strong safety. We'll see the strong safety come in um, on the inside run play, and if we don't hold him with that bubble, he'll be in there to make the tackle, uh, especially on the quarterback keep sometimes. So we want to hold him and make him respect that bubble out there. So that's his whole purpose in here. The key to the midline is that the running back has to run straight down the middle. Okay, so that's his path, and then he'll read off the block on that nose. He doesn't need to read the tackle because the tackle is being blocked by the quarterback's eyes. If he has the football, that means the quarterback or the tackle was stayed outside on. So we're backside cut off, trying to handle this backer here. Um, we're climbing the inside backer here, blocking out, and our quarterback must give up that midline to the um, to the um, running back to the R. And so what we're going to do with that is he, as he takes a snap, he's going to open a little bit and, and drop his foot to open. So he's going to step off the midline and give it up. And as he does that, he's going to work his way up into the line. Okay. So it's important that as he does this, he's going to drop and then start to work his way and kind of hop into the line as he reads that tackle. Um, this, a lot of times the read will happen as the collision on the back is happening. If that tackle comes down hard, Okay, the quarterback will pull and replace. If the tackle sits, if the tackle sits, we're giving the midline. Okay, if the tackle squeezes down, the quarterback will pull and replace 
the tackle. Now it's important, the run is not out here. Um, th that will happen occasionally if the end also crashes hard. Um, that can occasionally happen. But really what he's trying to do is pull and replace that tackle. And so if the tackle comes down and tackles the R, he's going to be off his hip around the edge. And we want to be right off the tackle's hip when he comes down and tight so that we don't get out here and run into the defensive end. Okay, so that's the midline. It takes a lot of work. Um, what we found putting it in this year was it takes a lot of work. I don't think we ever really got great at it. Um, we were much, I think the veer was much easier than the midline, although I love the midline and we had some really good plays off of it. Um, the keys here though, I think this backside cutoff, you've got to know whether or not you can handle this defensive end. Um, the read is fairly easy because you're basically looking at if the tackle comes down, can he touch the R, okay? If he's close enough to touch the R, and we're in a very tight space, so as he's reading up and, and riding up into the line on this, that tackle is gonna be really close or sitting out wide, okay? If you're looking at this thing and that tackle can't touch the R, give it to the R. If you're reading this thing and that tackle is, is zeroed in on tackling the R, pull it and replace, and go around, replace. Okay, so that's basically what we're trying to do with the midline. I think it's a great play. Um, I would want to check it against even fronts, against odd fronts. It really becomes very similar to the veer, uh, other than that you're going to read off of the nose for the back where he can cut to the backside uh, if it's there. So that's midline out of the pistol. Really simple. And again, don't be fooled. Pistol power offense system. We can run any of this stuff. It's really easy to put in, but you got to be committed to it. You got to be uh, a believer in the option, and then you can definitely do it. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to go ahead and subscribe down below. Also, if you want to check out my free video series on the Pistol Power Offense system, you can do that. Just go down in the video description. There'll be a link for you there. Thanks for watching this video.